Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I was working through the book Lectures on Astrophysics by the late and great Steven Weinberg. And it's a thin book that contains a lot of valuable insights and information about astrophysics, obviously. And to my delight, there were some problems in the back of the book. And to my further delight, those problems don't seem to have any known solutions on the internet as far as I could see. And so I thought they might be fertile testing ground for the DeepSeek R1 and OpenAI O1 Pro models. Now, because there are no solutions on the internet, I had to come up with a solution. And I have to say, it did give me a challenge, but I did get it. So I thought I would at least go through the problem statement just so you know how I would expect these AI models to solve the problem. Okay, so this is the problem here. It says, work under the assumption that interstellar matter is in local thermal equilibrium. The ratio of pressure to density is a constant ratio of Vs squared. So that's essentially just the speed of sound in the medium squared. But the initial density rho has the unrealistic form rho of r is equal to k over r. Okay, and so the question that's in the book is basically asking what is the initial radius of the smallest sphere centered at r equals zero that will undergo gravitational collapse. And as a bonus question, I wanted the AI models to effectively determine the kinetic and gravitational self-energy to make sure that it indeed satisfies the Virial theorem, which is how you solve this problem. Now, I wanted to ask them this question because that's actually how I verified myself to make sure my question, my answer to part A was correct. Because if your if your answer to part A is correct, then you should have this equation here satisfied that relates the gravitational self-binding energy and the thermal energy. So, anyways, I don't want to go through the entire derivation here because I know people really want to see the AI model solve it. So. To go about solving this problem, you have to find the radius at which this inequality starts to occur, where the pressure gradient force is no longer enough to withstand the gravitational self-gravity, and so the, the collapse into a star will start to occur. So we just have to set up the, this inequality here, use the integrals that define both this capital pi and this omega representing the thermal and the gravitational energy. And because there is a relationship between the pressure and the density given by this ratio here, you can substitute the definition of density and plug it into both the P and the rho here, because the P and rho are just related by this uh, constant. And if you carry out this integration and do the algebra, you'll find that the minimum value of R should satisfy this expression. So it's 9 fourths the speed of sound squared divided by pi g k, where k is the constant. Okay, so this is the answer here. And for the next part of the problem, I wanted to verify that this was indeed the right radius at which this occurs. And like I said before, this occurs when uh, this relationship is satisfied. So at that smallest radius, these two energies have to be equal to each other. And so I did the rest of the work by hand on paper because I didn't want to type it all out in LaTeX. But effectively, you just plug back in this value of radius for the uh, the final uh, integration limit in those integrals. In the original problem, I believe the constant was just c, not k. So just in your mind, change k to c when you're looking at this integral here. If you go all the way down here through all the algebra, you should get an expression that looks like 243 speed of sound to the sixth over 8 pi g squared constant. And if you plug it into the thermal energy, again, r just being critical radius, if you plug that back into the definition for pi, you also will get the same expression. Uh, so indeed, this should be the answer that the models are getting. And let's go ahead and uh, take a look. So I actually did this in stages. So here is DeepSeek's first attempt to solve the problem. I didn't give it the second part. This was just for the first part of the problem. It thought for about a minute and a half here. And it's really cool to see its chain of thought. I, I like how it says here, I remember that for a cloud to collapse, the gravitational force must overcome the internal pressure support. This probably relates to the gene's instability criterion, which indeed is the case. But of course, it doesn't just stop there. You know, it, it really tries to make sure it's on the right track. And I, I just, I cannot get over all the weights and stuff because it just sounds so human in a, in a weird way. And I don't know if I'll ever get used to it, to be honest. Anyways, the chain of thought goes through the whole problem here, and indeed it winds up with the correct answer of 9 uh, speed of sound squared over 4 pi gk. So go down all the way here, 
indeed gets the right answer. When I gave it the bonus question, so it, I, I pretty much just gave it the same question again, but with the bonus down here, uh, it thought for about two minutes this time, and it goes through virtually the same logic again, not exactly the same tokens, but the logic is still the same for part one, and so it gets the final answer again of this expression. And then it goes through the process of determining what the energies are at that radius. And so if we go past the chain of thought and we go down to the solution here in its final expression, we see it gets the final radius correctly. And if we look at the validation of the virial theorem, we can see indeed that it does satisfy the relationship that 2k plus u is equal to zero, where k is the kinetic, u is the potential energy. And so they get the same exact expressions that I got. And yeah, it uh, completely got it. What about O1 Pro though? So O1 Pro thought for three and a half minutes roughly, and it, like DeepSeek, went on the right path in terms of identifying it needs to equate the two energy expressions. And indeed it gets the value of nine uh, VS squared over four pi GK at the end. So it, it uh, did the same steps, got the, the same result. And that was just for the first part. And then when I added the bonus question and re-asked it again, it took this time eight minutes to think about it, or eight and a quarter minutes to think about it. But nevertheless, it goes through the same process as before, gets the right expression for the radius again. And then when it does the verification of plugging this radius into the two integrals and doing the integration process, it is indeed able to derive the uh, same expressions for the potential energy as well as the kinetic energy. And so it's able to satisfy the virial theorem uh, exactly. And so both models were able to take down this astrophysics problem. I thought that was fairly impressive because like I said at the start of this video, I don't believe these problems have been solved before, uh, are available anywhere on the internet. And so I had to go and do it. And to be honest, I wasn't entirely sure for a while that I did it correct until I did this last check with the, the energies and plugged in my, my initial answer and got this. So when I saw both models get the answers that I got, I was like, whoa, wow, okay, it looks like I did do it right. So anyways, that's it for the video. I hope you found this interesting. It's really cool to see two really powerful models able to solve astrophysics problems that, to my recollection, just aren't available anywhere on the internet. So who knows, maybe we can do this again sometime. It'll motivate me to go through this book some more and pick other problems to solve. And uh, it's nice to have some sort of independent verification that I'm, I'm doing things somewhat right. So anyways, leave your comments if you liked it and I will see you next time.